story of friendship, the cow and the carabao. Cow and carabao were great friends, but had some difficulty trusting one another. Some say their trust issues developed when both of them belonged to the same farmer. In those days, neither of them wanted to be turned into Keliguin, that was for sure. So, worried for their lives, they each displayed to their owner their capabilities as beasts of burden. Cow had a difficult time proving her strength because although she was bigger than the other animals, she was, by her estimation, a tiny bit smaller than Carabao. And while she was only able to carry a very few loads, she was far more nimble than her counterpart, a matter of which Cow always made sure to let Carabao know whenever she arrived at a destination first. She'd toss her head up in the air, moo loudly, and repeatedly tap at the dirt, shaking up the dust in the road, very grandly announcing her arrival to whomever could see her, glancing very prettily at that big beast, himself lumbering toward her, guaranteed to be far off in the distance. Then when Carabao arrived, inev inevitably second, he made sure to sidle up right next to Cal so she would hear the farmer's amazement at the amount that he carried and at how much time he had saved. Carabao may not have been fast, but he was sure to carry a load safely and securely to its destination. Oh, but Cal never had to worry. The farmer knew that her true value lay in her milk, which was sweet and could be traded for the best fish or vegetables. In these ways, their survival on the farm was ensured. Unfortunately, by the time they each realized their unique value to their owner, it was too late for them to change the competitive nature of their relationship. It seems these two became so accustomed to their rivalry that toward the end of their stay at the farm, both Cow and Carabao resorted to squabble, squabbles over the more superficial aspects of their existence, whose eyes had longer lashes, whose hooves stayed remarkably cleaner, who had fewer flies buzzing around his or her tail, and uh, just who had more of everything. Thankfully, it was in this way too that both Cow and Carabao were able to develop their friendship. One would mention how brilliantly the sun's rays reflected off of her or his skin, and the other would snort in disbelief. Pretty soon, the disbelieving snorts gave way to giggles and laughter at their shared silliness, and then to more serious conversations and complaints about their lives on the farm. The two found that they in fact liked each other very much. They were able to maintain their friendly distrust, their amiable competition, even after the farmer had sold each one of them to different farms. Luckily, the farms were not too far from one another, and Cow and Carabao managed to meet up with each other on days when no loads needed carrying and the milking was all done. On one of these days, the two met and decided that it was too hot to do anything besides swim. Now, Cow and Carabao had gone swimming with each other a few times before, but since they had this natural inclination to distrust one another, they had developed a sort of ritual to their sunbathing activities, a ritual designed to guard against any competitive nonsense from the other. So when they got to the river, they immediately went to their respective trees to undress. Cow initially claimed Itronka Nidzuk for herself because of its built-in security measure of falling coconuts. Carabao envied Cow's coconut falling security system, but he was satisfied that his banana leaves were large enough to protect his hide from any sudden rainfall. If needed, the shade would provide immediate, re immediate respite from the glaring heat of the sun. Beneath their respective trees, they each very carefully removed their skins. Cow folded her hide nicely and neatly, careful with the creases she made. The hide was tough to fold, coarse and scratchy, but it protected her from bug bites and she admired the color, the deep, deep brown of the earth. It wasn't often she was able to scare, stare at her skin from this perspective, she thought. She carefully placed it on the, under the protection of a coconut tree by the bank, keeping Carabao in her sights the entire time. Carabao, on the other hand, had a hide as creamy white as the clouds in the sky. To annoy Cow, Carabao would often liken the color of his skin to the sweet milk that Cow produced. He too knew to take good care of his skin and folded it very nicely, 
and placed it beneath the banana tree, keeping Cal in his sights the entire time. After this ritual of undressing and folding and placing, they each took their exposed pink bodies and finally immersed themselves in the cool river. Once in the refreshing water, the two skinny dipped happily beneath the hot afternoon sun, laughing and playing, only every now and then stopping to look at each other out of the corner of their eyes, checking to make sure the other one was not up to anything. They swam and played like this through the waning of the afternoon, never thinking once to glance, not at each other, but at their precious skins. As dusk approached, a young man on his way home came upon the bathing beasts in the river. What a strange sight, he observed of the two frolicking animals. What is this enchantment, he wondered. Stopping in his tracks, seduced by their laughter, he moved closer to the riverbank and spied on the creatures for a moment longer. The young man observed the area around him with some fear and suspicion. Could there be duendes hiding in the nearby tree, Tatamotna? He shuddered, took in the surroundings more keenly, and then noticed the coconut and the banana trees and what looked like animal skins beneath them. Feverish from the excitement and strangeness of the moment, the young man impulsive, impulsively decided that of course he must be here for a reason and that maybe, just maybe the reason was to play a trick on these two animals. He thought, why not take full advantage of this magic? So the young man quietly snuck over to the coconut tree first, took the carefully folded gray bundle beneath it and placed it under the banana tree. Then he took the carefully folded white bundle beneath the banana tree and placed the soft hide under the coconut tree. This prankster worried about getting caught, slid off into the darkness hurriedly, not wanting to see the results of his mean trick. Further down the path, he let loose a loud booming laugh and chuckled all the way home, imagining what he would see the next day. The Sanahi moon had risen high in the sky when Kao and Karabad sighted they were tired and it was time to go. They got out of the river, went to their respective trees and put on their nice and neatly folded attire. The moon was not bright enough for them to see that their hides had been exchanged. And the two, too drunk from conversation and laughter, went home happily without com competition, without a care in the world. In the morning, Ka woke up feeling out of sorts. When she went to pasture, her movements were slow. Her gait was heavy. She walked around her farm without her usual nimble gestures. She felt as if her farmer had loaded her down with a burden to carry. How was this possible? Cal lumbered along sluggish and unsteady. Her skin was hanging loose off her bones. Similarly at Carabao's farm, he awoke feeling miserable. Instead of feeling loose and wobbly, he felt as if he were being squeezed. His entire lumbering body was stiff. His joints popped back and forth so quickly as if wound on a spring. But once he became accustomed to the tightness of his skin, his muscles felt compelled to burst out of it. He ran, racing faster than the other caravan near his home, all the way to Cal, who looked at him perplexed. You have my hide on, Cal cried. My beautiful, beautiful hide. And Carabao saw his milky white skin hanging limply on the bones of Cal and laughed. It is right that you, Cal, you have the milky skin, said Carabao, who had already fallen in love with the feel of his new self. The outside of your body matches the inside. The skin you carry will remind people of what you are capable of making, and my skin will help me carry my loads more quickly. Cal wondered momentarily, is he trying to trick me? But because of her friendship with Carabao, Cal was able to consider his perspective. Perhaps you're right, my friend. Maybe just by looking at me, people will think of the sweet milk I make. And Cal was okay to temporarily let him borrow her hide. The two stared at each other in amazement, getting used to the little bit of each other that they had acquired. Eventually, Cal grew to love the attention she was getting for being so pretty and she never once tried to get back her skin. However, whenever they went swimming, 
they were both careful to always swim with their clothes on. And what about our trickster? Had he ever seen the outcome of his prank? If he had, he would have been disappointed to see two dear friends, again, too drunk from their conversation, from their laughter, swimming in the happiness of their renewed selves without competition and without a care in the world. To this day, the descendants of cow have skinned the color of their milk and the descendants of Carabao are the swiftest beasts of burden on the island. The end.